Hello everyone, in this episode we are going to talk about indifference uh, curves. So let's start with a preference relation, all right? So let's suppose we have a preference relation, complete transitive and reflexive binary relation on some set of alternatives x, all right? So x can be finite, infinite, doesn't matter, uh, but it's a set of alternatives and the preference relation is defined on this set x. So this is how we define the indifference curves. So <clears throat> um, we call it, uh, we denote it this way and sometimes i sub a, all right? Um, so either way is okay. So this is a set which basically contains alternatives like x's um, such that the alternative x is indifferent to alternative a for any a in x, all right? So, I mean, we should put for any a in x maybe in front of it because this set is defined for a. So for any alternative a, we define its, its indifference curve, all right? Indifference curve of alternative a. All right, so that's very important. So the indifference curves belong to an alternative. Um, so indifference curve of an alternative A is basically a set of other alternatives which are indifferent to A according to this preference relation. And if you remember, this indifference basically means X is at least as good as A and A is at least as good as X. So therefore, for you, you're indifferent to choose either A or, or X. All right? So, well, what if I want to define a set this? This is, uh, sometimes we call this uh, uh, in, uh, yeah, indifference, yeah, indifference curve, I'm sorry. So we call this at least as good as set of alternative A, which is an element, uh, an alternative in X. All right, so at least as good as A means the following. What are the alternatives in this set X, which are at least as good as the alternative A? All right, so the, the intuition of these uh, definitions are very simple. So tell me all the x's in my mother space such that the x is at least as good as a. You may be indifferent to a, all right? I mean, I don't care, uh, but it should be the case that x is at least as good as a. All right. So obviously we can also define worse than set of A, that which means A is, is, is at least as good as X and X is not at least as good as A. All right. So it's uh, therefore uh, worse than set of A. Uh, yep. Okay. So, uh, so this is how we define these two sets. Well, sometimes remember, um, in many environments, when we, for example, talk about consumer theory, we do not really talk about preferences. Instead, we talk about utility function. Remember, utility function uh, is a function which maps X, the set of alternatives, to real numbers. And we know that for every preference relation, all right, for every preference relation, there exists some utility function. Uh, Remember the uh, theorem? So for every preference relation which is continuous uh, has a, a utility function uh, which represents this preference relation and that utility function is also continuous. So if X is a finite set, we don't need continuity, but if X is not in a finite set, well, then we need the continuity of the preferences. So I, I, I skip the details, but for every preference relation, with some nice properties, we can find the utility function which represents the preference relation. That means, you know, whenever alternative X is at least as good as Y, that also means utility of X is greater than or equal to utility of Y and the other way around as well. So here, um, I mean, I don't think at this level it's going to be a cause of trouble, but this is at least as good as binary relation. These are alternatives like Apple Banana or, you know, BMW versus Ferrari. But these are real numbers. Remember, utility function 
is taking alternative like Ferrari attaches an, a real number to that. So U of X is a number, U of Y is another number. So these are real numbers. So this is standard greater than or equal to sign. All right, so they're not, they're not the same thing. So be careful about this. I mean, this, this tilted uh, sign is not by mistake. All right, okay, so uh, what does that mean? That means when we talk about an indifference uh, curve, we can actually, therefore, write down the indifference curve of A. So in that case, I'm gonna use this IA notation because the preference relation is not mentioned here. So the I refers to the indifference, uh, the I in the indifference. So indifference uh, curve of alternative A is nothing but, I am transforming this definition into a utility form. It means X in uh, X, capital X, such that utility of X, right? Instead of saying X is indifferent to A, utility of X is equal to utility of A. That's it. So therefore, the at least as good as set, I can write it as follows. Um, R A, the at least as good as set, is all the X's in the mother set X, capital X, be careful, such that utility of X is greater than or equal to utility of A. So you see what I mean? A is, for example, in the set, because A is uh, at least as good as itself, because this relationship this relation uh, is a preference relation, so it's reflexive. So A is in this set, A is also in this set, all right? Um, so very well. The question is, um, how do we, um, you know, picture these indifference curves? Well, it's simple. If you, if you know the preference relation, uh, you can picture it, all right? Uh, and or if you know the utility function, you can picture it as well. So let's start with the uh, simple examples where we know the utility function. Then I am going to talk about an example where we don't know the utility function. In fact, utility function does not exist, but we know the in, uh, uh, preference relation. So here is an example, utility of x, y is equal to, so it's, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, we can definitely do that. I'm sorry. Let's start with an even simpler example, which may confuse you, but X square, all right? And X is coming from this capital X, which is, uh, let's suppose, zero, one closed interval, all right? So my set of alternatives are zero, one closed interval, and my utility function is the square of the x. All right. Well, if this is the case, how do I create an indifference curve? Well, good question. So what is my a? a is just an alternative, remember? All right. So let's choose a is equal to 1. All right. So what is the point in 0, 1 interval? So x is in 0, 1 interval such that x squared is equal to a, right? Uh, utility of x, x squared, utility of a is one to the power two, so it's just one. All right, that's it, x squared equals one. Hmm, so what are they? Well, well, the square of something is equal to one, so that means this x is equal to either plus or minus one, right? Um, okay, good. But we know that minus one cannot be in this set. Why is that? Because this set only takes values from zero, one interval. So minus one is out of picture. So hence, only one is in this point. So you know what? This is the indifference curve of uh, A equals one, as simple as this. Well, what if A is equal to, I don't know, one over four? Let's pick something. Uh, easier. Well, again, the i a equals 1 over 4 is x in 0, 1 interval such that x square is equal to 1 over 4 square. All right? So once again, 
x is equal to either plus 1 over 4 or minus 1 over 4, but you know what? Minus 1 over 4 is not in this interval, so therefore i a equal 1 over 4 is nothing but 1 over 4 itself. So probably you do see the uh, pattern here. Can I conclude that the indifference curve of an A is actually nothing but A itself? That's a good exercise. I'm going to leave it there. You can probably prove this or disprove this statement. All right? Okay, so that's one kind of simple example where uh, there is only one uh, uh, dimension in my alternatives and, and the, here the dimension is the set of alternative x is a 0, 1 closed interval. So, okay, let's make things a bit more complicated. Uh, let's suppose x is equal to r square, all right? So, and in fact, let's make it r square plus plus. Uh, well, only one plus, so that means 0 is also in here, but negative numbers are not included, so this is all uh, non-negative real numbers, uh, 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 vectors, all right, because it's r square. Okay, so what is my utility function? Well, utility function should have two components, right, x and y, all right, so utility of x, y is equal to, I don't know, something maybe uh, easier, um, uh, x times y, all right? Okay, so this is my utility function. What is an indifference curve for any alternative? All right, so let's start by picking. Uh, I need uh, some clean space, so I'm gonna clean here. So A can be anything uh, from R square, all right? Be careful about this. So the first example I'm gonna pick is uh, A equals, all right, um, five. All right, so if a is equal to 5, remember the indifference curve of a equals 5 is the following, x in r squared plus, such that, I mean it's like x, y, right? Uh, utility, so I have to be careful, right? So I have to say x, y vector is in r squared such that utility of x, y, which is equal to x times y, is equal to um, oh, yep, there you go. I mean, we, we make mistakes. So what is a equals 5? Is this really an element of r square? Um, no, not really. It is, it is not an element in my domain. So therefore, I have to be careful about it. So let's a, b, um, 5, 2, okay? So my a is 5, 2 vector. So tell me the indifference curve of 5, 2. And so that means the utility of x, y has to be equal to utility of 5, 2, which is in fact 5 times 2, so it's 10. All right? So therefore, this is the graph I need to draw. x, y equals 10 graph. All right? On what space? on an r2 plus. So this is x, this is y. Question is, which x and y tuples, when they multiplied, are going to give me 10? Well, one simple point is 5, x5, let's say it's here, y2. All right. Um, in fact, this is my point A, right? The other point is, this time, x to y5, right? This is the symmetric version because 2 times 5 or 5 times 2, both 10. So this is also uh, indifferent in the indifference curve. What else? Well, uh, x is 10, y is 1. So somewhere here, I'm sorry, my graph is not perfect. So, and, and, and y1 is somewhere here, so probably this point. And similarly, somewhere here, right? Oops, there you go. This is, let's say, 1, 
this is uh, uh, 10, this is one. So this is also on my indifference curve. Well, what else? Well, let's suppose X is equal to something else be between two and five. So for example, four, if X is four, well then Y is equal to right 10 over four, which means five over two, because when they are multiplied, it has to be equal to 10. So if X is four somewhere here, Y is equal to two and a half somewhere here all right Oop, very well but the symmetric also is true so two and a half x y is equal to four somewhere here all right so this is also in my indifference curve so um i think the the uh the the, the uh tendency is is clear just connect the dots if the uh if the picture is not clear just pick some other points i'm sorry this should be smoothly convex, which I will define later. So you know what? This is the indifference curve, all right, of the alternative A, all right? So um, that's, that's how we draw the indifference curve. Well, the initial mistake I made, like A equals five, remember? There's also another way of drawing indifference curve. And there, we do not pick an alternative A, but we, all right, we do not pick an alternative A. Instead, we just pick the utility value, some K, all right, the level set arguments. If you go back to the math review, um, this is how we drove the level sets. We just fixed a, a number from the reals, all right, any number from the reals, and then say, hey, look, what is the, uh, utility of x, y such that, I'm sorry, what are the x, y points such that the utility is equal to k, all right? So is it also an, an indifference curve? Well, of course. For example, if k is equal to 10, all right? And in fact, in fact, that's, that's important to note, all the points on this indifference curve are actually giving utility, utility x, y, equal 10, right? That's the idea because all those points are indifferent to A, which means they're giving exactly the same utility with A. What is the utility alternative A gives? Well, it's, remember, 5, 2. So the utility function is 5 times 2, so it's 10. So therefore, all the alternatives in this indifference curve are going to give the uh, utility value 10. So therefore, you either draw exactly this line by picking this A, all right, or by picking K equals 10. Either way, you will draw exactly the same graph, all right? So this is how we draw the indifference curve.